do you continue to move forward when you don't feel like you are making progress? <laughs> if you're anything like me, there are moments in your life, and I'm sure you're very similar to me in this regard, moments in your life where you feel like, I had it, there was some momentum, things were happening, now they're not I'm not sure I can put one foot in front of the other. That's what we talk about all of the time on this show. How to march when it would be easier to stay where you are and die. The reality is, over the course of our lives, there will be high moments, those moments when you're up on the top of the mountain. There will also be those valley moments where you're down, where things don't seem as clear as they might have just a little while ago. But you're going to have another mountaintop, and then you'll have another valley. And the goal in our lives is to find success, however we measure that, by continuing forward. We need to continue moving one foot at a time, one step at a time. Uh, marching when it would be easier to stay where we are and die. Continuing on so that God can do everything He desires to do with us. As we pursue Him, we focus on what He has set right in front of us, and we will find, according to His measure, that is God's success. Now, I understand that all of that is much easier said than done, and that's why I'm so grateful for the guest that we have on today. Our guest today is Todd Tillman. Todd is the winner of the 18th season of The Voice. You may be familiar with Todd and his music. Uh, great music, great story, uh, big family, and he is someone who articulates so well how to continue to move forward. Really excited to share this episode with you in just a moment. Hello and welcome to the March or Die show today. Very glad to have you joining me. And I really am uh, so happy to be able to share this interview with you. Uh, Todd, as you'll hear in just a moment, you may be familiar with him. Many people are, of course. And um, hopefully you, uh, if you're not already familiar, you will be after this episode. And you can go check his music out. He, he does such a great job of telling his story, uh, articulating what I spend a lot of time trying to communicate on this show, how to continue moving forward, how to follow God even when the future is not entirely clear. And uh, I'm so grateful to be able to talk with him today. Before we jump into that uh, interview, I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things for me. First of all, subscribe. If you are not yet subscribed to this podcast, do it right now. Do it right now. We've had a lot of folks join the podcast community here in the last several weeks. Very grateful for you. Thank you for jumping on and listening. Make sure you're subscribed so you know when this content comes out. Uh, very, uh, very important that you do that. And then go ahead and leave me comments. Uh, share the content with others. That'd be fantastic. If you'd like more information about me, the other work that I'm involved in, to connect to my socials, go to jeremystalnicker.com, jeremystalnicker.com. Come. All right, we're going to jump into this interview, and again, it's a good one. Todd Tillman is my guest. Todd, as I mentioned uh, a minute ago, was the winner of The Voice Season 18. Um, incredible musician. Uh, I, I love his faith story. It's so authentic. It's so real, and he just talks about what it is to keep moving forward, uh, to find success, and then on the other side of that success, to work hard, to stay focused on what God has in front of you. And uh, you will be encouraged with this interview, and I hope that you'll share it out. Thank you for listening. Now, enjoy this interview with my guest, Todd Tillman. Todd, thanks for joining me, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man, I appreciate you inviting me on here. It, uh, it's exciting to be able to sit down and talk for a few minutes. Um, I was uh, sharing your song, Dig My Grave, around with everybody in my house the other awesome. day. They, they weren't as excited as I was, but <laughs> pretty good. you guys got to sit down and listen to this song, and uh, they're going to listen to it again before the day is out. But uh, um, a lot of people know you and know your story, but for those that don't, why don't we just start there? Tell us your story. Um, it, it's, to me, it's pretty interesting. I've got some questions about your transitions through your various stages of life, but uh, yeah. I'd love to hear your faith story, how you grew up, and how you got into what you're doing. Yeah, you know, um, uh, when I was – Man, my story is actually really long and complicated, so I'll try to condense it as much as possible. <laughs> Aren't they all? Uh, yeah. Uh, so when I was just a little kid, like a, a little boy, um, a really like a very young boy, my uh, my parents were kind of in church, but not really, you know. Mm. And um, and so uh, I was born in Grenada, Mississippi, and uh, yeah. and uh, my my grandmother actually was very very 
involved and being at church and all the things. And so, so she would come and pick me up a lot to take me to church. Now, mom and dad would go, but just sort of irregular, you know? Uh, so, uh, as far as, as far as like the church and the faith part, it kind of started there. And then my dad surrendered to the Lord, actually ended up in ministry and all those things. And through, through those years, especially early, really early on is when I first started singing. Uh, and, uh, I was just sang in church and, and so basically, uh, when I was about, I was 11 years old, actually that, that was a big year when I was 11, my, uh, my grandmother passed away, which was devastating to me. Uh, and really frankly still is I'm 45 years old now and it still is fairly devastating Mm -hmm. to me. And, uh, she passed away and then we moved away and my dad, my dad pastored a church in Kosciuszko, Mississippi for a couple of years. Then we moved to Meridian when I was 14, uh, Meridian, Mississippi. And um, at that time, he, my dad was pastor in a church, which I ultimately, you know, I don't want to give away the end of the movie or anything, but like <laughs> that, that's the church that I ultimately ended up pastoring was the mm, church that we moved okay. to in, yeah. in Meridian. Yeah. So uh, I was 14. I met my wife uh, shortly thereafter. I mean, of course, she wasn't my wife at the time. We were, I was maybe 15. She was like 13, you know, and, uh, and we met one another then and, and kind of, you know, it's, it's wild. Um, I, um, it's hard to say, cause I don't know, I don't want to mess with anybody's ideology or theology, but in my life, I had all of these times where I, I would sort of turn to Jesus, but I always say, I feel like when I really did give my life to the Lord, like, and I knew what I was doing and I meant it. I think it was when I was 17, you know, uh, I, I remember it pretty well. And, and, um, so that's when I really sort of dove into my relationship with the Lord, which, you know, I guess like everybody has, has been really wonderful at times. And I, I've, yeah. I've kind of been sort of a knucklehead a, a few times, <laughs> you know, and uh, that's, you know, um, so my, my wife and I met, I, I went to high school in Meridian. I, I, um, I surrendered to the call, uh, to go into ministry at, in Meridian. And, uh, so, uh, man, me and my wife, you know, when I first met her, she didn't like me and all those things. She sure. is really, yeah. you know, I lived that even, story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like, even now she's still like way out of my league, but it's kind of too late, you know? Um, so, uh, we, um, we dated a lot. She, she, at first she didn't like me at all. Like she just didn't like me. And so then she kind of decided she did. We dated, she dumped me. We dated, she dumped me. We dated. I dumped her one time, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, uh, then ultimately we ended up getting married, uh, yeah. in 1998. And right about that same time is when I went into ministry, uh, traditional ministry. Um, yeah. I was youth pastor and I was already singing, uh, at church. I'd been singing, you know, my whole life really. And so I went into ministry, um, then, and, uh, just, I started out leading worship and, and leading the youth group. And, um, I, uh, that sort of, she and I got married, you know, we, we, we started having kids then. Mm. Well, I say we started having kids. We had one, one son and, uh, you know, and then we went through a little patch where she wasn't, so we did get married super young. And so she wasn't certain she wanted to be married. She actually filed for divorce, but God, God healed really. I mean, it's, it's complicated, but he healed our, our marriage. Yeah. And so, so then, you know, man, like I said, I'm trying to condense it as much as possible. There's so much, uh, then we, um, you know, we stayed together. We, we had a a couple of more kids Then we adopted our oldest daughter. Then we uh, adopted our second oldest daughter. Then we had three more kids. So we have eight, eight kids total, but in the, in the span of us growing a family and all that, I, um, I transitioned into associate pastor and then ultimately, uh, 2011, I transitioned into pastor, like lead pastor of the, the same church. I was there since I was 14. And, um, then, uh, you know, uh, there, man, I, I could go into millions of stories about pastoring and all that. But so ultimately about 2017, uh, you know, I, I always love to tell this part cause I feel like there's probably people that listen to podcasts or, or read articles or whatever that, that maybe this will help about 2017, uh, for really for more than one reason, but one ma- major thing happened and I don't really go into what it was, but it was a really major deal in our life. Uh, I started sort of really feeling like, um, like I, something had to change, like something had to change, 
You know, I don't have any explanation except to say it couldn't stay like it was. Uh, So I started digging around uh, into other things that I could possibly do. I don't, and you know, I don't, maybe it was a midlife crisis. I don't know. You know, (laughs) I, uh, so I started digging around and, and um, I was, I, I looked at all kinds of things and sort of landed on real estate. I was just about to uh, start the studying for whatever the tests and things, you know, you have to take. And, and that all at, around that time, all of that spanned over a couple of years, uh, started in 2017 and early 2019 is when, um, when a friend sent me the, uh, the link to audition for the voice, like an yeah, open well. call audition. And, um, and, you know, honestly, uh, all of that kind of happened and, and then I went and, and so here we are. And as, and as far as my faith, oh man, I, I think my faith has probably been the same as pretty much anybody's faith journey that has any history, you know, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, uh, yeah. it's just been a, it's been a wild ride and all, and now don't, I don't want to, I certainly don't want to come across the wrong way. I love the word of God. I trust the word of God. I believe the word of God. Uh, I don't minimize God's word in any way. Uh, so let me, having said that, the majority of my faith is is based mostly on what I've lived, though. Like, mm. I've just seen God do too much, you right. know? And right. and so that, that's why I believe his word, because I've experienced so much of it. We've been through almost divorce, and we've had sick kids. We've had severe mental illness in our family, you know? And, and God's mm. just brought us out every time, you know? Hey, Todd, what, so you, you don't know my story, but I was in the Marine Corps. I was raised in a pastor's home. <laughs> Uh, Me too. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be a pastor. So I decided to go in the Marine Corps. I said, I'd never go in ministry. I ended up in ministry. Um, yeah. I pastored a church for a bunch of years. I'm doing something different now. And I, I talk to people often who feel like, uh, I knew what God wanted me to do when I was young, or I knew, you know, whatever, wh- whether it was ministry or something else. And then things changed and they just never get their feet underneath them again. You know, it's like, well, I knew what it was. Now I don't, things have changed. Maybe I missed something. And I really believe that so much of the Christian life is just trusting God for the next step and right. being willing to adjust, but being willing to dig in when you need to dig in. How do you how do you talk to people about that? Because your story is that, right? It's like I started here, and then things changed, and then some bad stuff mm-hmm. happened. And Maybe the question is, why do you keep going, or how do you keep going, or how do you continue to look for God to open the next door when you're – it's a journey, right? Life is a journey. How do you, how do you yeah. stay focused and move forward in that way? Oh man, man, that's tough. Uh, I guess the first thing, I mean, I don't know that this is, maybe this is first in order of priority. I don't know. Uh, (laughs) but I guess one of the first things I would say is faith, faith pleases God. And so, um, Mm. and the scripture tells us that. And so a lot of times I think we get so caught up or at least I do in like, what's the right next step and what's this and what's that. Yeah. And, And so what I try to do is I try to just say, all right, Lord, like whatever the next door that opens or whatever, if I, if I feel confident in my spirit that that's God Mm. and I have enough faith to do anything, little, big, whatever, just make a step, even if it's not him, I think my faith pleases him enough that he'll, he'll get me on the right track. And I think it just, you know, no, you know, I, I, I do think we have to have a legitimate sense in our heart that we're doing what we feel like God wants of course. us to do. Yeah, of course. And, um, and, and then, then after that, even if that isn't what God wanted you to do, I think your faith, you had enough faith to move on that, you know? And so I, I, I have seen more times than once in my life that he'll move you. And then the other, the other thing is, um, that I would say is always try to, um, I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring out the words that I want to say about try to remember that what's right in front of you right now, whether it's your wife or your kids or your job or, or whatever you're doing in church or whatever, what's right in front of you right now is very important. And That's good. so try not to, uh, you know, try not to, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. It's almost like try not to miss the trees for the forest, you know, because a lot of people yeah. say, a lot of people say don't miss the forest for the trees, but a lot of people miss the trees for the forest. They're so focused on this big thing yep. that they forget yep. these things that are right in front of you, right? You know, and uh, and so steward those things well as best you can every day until God opens the next door. You know, man, that's good. I was talking to my wife this morning. I've got a, like a crazy schedule in the next four or five weeks, 
and I was complaining to her. That's all I was doing. Like I was complaining, right? And she was listening, and yeah. it was nice that she was listening. And then I, I just I felt convicted as I was having the conversation. Like all of these things, first of all, I, I scheduled them. Uh, I agreed to <laughs> right. them. I leaned into it, right? And, and second, they're all great things. And and I get so caught up in like looking past the good things. I just want to get through this or get to the next mm-hmm. thing or whatever. That you're exactly right. It's so hard to just settle in and focus on, man, God's got something good for you right now. And yeah. even if things are tough, look for the good. Let God work in you now and then take the next step and figure that next thing out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, yeah, I, I can so relate to you a lot. That. I'm the world's worst about just saying on this day, we'll be done with all this. You know, like whether it's a month from now or two months from now or six months from now. <laughs> right, but right. I do think. Yeah. And I mean, I, I certainly don't want to speak for God, but I do think maybe God's like, why don't you be grateful and have some gratitude for what's right in front of you right now and pay mm. attention to what it is and put your heart into it, whatever it is. And then, uh, you know, till the next thing. Yeah. Because the, I mean, the journey is the destination, yeah. you know, <laughs> that's good. No, that's good. And that's, that's an important word because so many people struggle. And, and I think part of the reason they struggle is because they're like, if I can just get through this, if I can just move on to the next thing mm-hmm. and uh, you need to focus where you are. Uh, when you transitioned right. from, we'll say vocational ministry, right? Because I, I think ministry mm-hmm. is broader than just church work, but right. when you transitioned 100%. from, from vocational ministry into music full time, uh, I, I have to imagine that there was a little bit of fear and, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, a lot of faith, obviously. What was that transition like for you? Yeah, you know, it's still, I mean, it's been two and a half years, I guess now. Uh, and there's still a lot. I mean, I, I'm fairly transparent about it. There's still a lot of fear. And I yeah. always, I can't tell you how many journalists and podcasters I've said, every, even now, today, today, I, I wake up in the morning, I lay in my bed for probably 20 minutes with debilitating anxiety mm-hmm. about whatever life is and what it's going to be then you know luckily <laughs> i'm i'm self-diagnosed let me just say but uh, <laughs> but l- luckily i'm kind of add too <laughs> so once i get out of bed and start focusing on something else then you just go you start doing your day but yeah yeah when we um when we transitioned it was i don't want to lie I, I don't know that it was the first thing but uh, my wife has always been the like crazy faith one. And mm. I've always been the keep your feet on the ground, kind of level headed. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah. And God balanced us out like that, you know? And, um, so when we made this move is one of the very few times in our marriage and family that it was me saying, let's leave everything we know. Let's do something crazy. You know, mm. not that we ever like left, but we just did. My wife has always been, let's do this, let's do that. She's the reason that our family is what it is and that we've, we adopted and all the things. And, and so I felt and still do from time to time. Uh, God's helped me a lot. Um, I felt a lot of re- personal responsibility to personally make it succeed because it was my decision to, to uh, now, now my wife knew that's, that's one thing that I sort of, um, I sort of am am very candid about with anybody who allows me to be is that I think a lot of people in the general public and in the kingdom, especially might would might would look at my life if if they look at it at all and think, um, you know, this guy went on TV and then just left all that. But that's really not we we were moving out of that. Uh, Mm, The God. Yeah. I always say about the voice, God just loved me enough to give me the grand gesture that he knew I would need to make a <laughs> right. move, you know? Right. Right. Um, and so, uh, so it's, it's been, but it's, it's also been one more time where it's just like, every time I turn around, God's just taking care of us, you know? Uh, cause I, you yeah, get dude. so, you know, you feel this responsibility, like it's your job and I don't, we are, we are stewards of it. And so we should, we can't just sit around and hope for it to fall in our yes. lap. I get that. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we can't do God's work. God can only do God's work. God's part of it, you know? And, um, and so what I've tried to do a lot of times, and I've been really great at it. And I've also been really terrible at it, uh, is, uh, just put it in God's hands. The part, you know, I've, I've, I have very physically and mentally as well, but I've actually physically made lists of all of the things that I'm struggling with and worried about, and then split them into two and column a, is the things that I can do anything about. 
And then column B is just full of all the things that I, that's just God. I can't, I can't do anything about those things. You know, Dude. it's tough now. It's not as easy as just making a list, yeah, no. but you know, that's, that's kind of one of what we've been doing. Man, that's so helpful though. I, again, I think that resonates with so many people. And I think why you've had such a connection too with people, and this is just as an outside observer is because you're, you're honest enough to express that, right? Like, Hey, this thing yeah, isn't easy. Yeah. I, I wrote this down. Um, I was on your social media and you, um, you said, this isn't a direct quote, but you said after you won the voice that a lot of people believe there's a yellow brick road laid out for you. And yeah, then you made, yeah. you made this statement. You said, instead, it's passion, closed doors, and excitement, disappointment, and work. Lots of work. Um, yeah. And the picture that was associated with that, if people haven't seen it, they need to go on Instagram and find it. Um, but the picture associated with that was you were sitting on a couch, I guess in a studio. That's what it looked like. In a studio. And you, and you were kind of doing this a little bit. That picture, when I saw it, connected with me immediately because I could feel it. Like, I know that yeah. feeling, right? Like, you're in the middle of it. You're doing what you believe you're supposed to do. But the pressure to keep working, keep grinding, keep making it happen, it's its just on top of you. And, right. um, man, that resonated with me so, so much. I, I feel like so many people, they think, if I could just make it, right, get on the voice, mm-hmm. win the voice. Um, right. Get get a contract or get that get that job or marry that person that everything's going to be fine, but it really comes down to a lot of hard work. Um, yeah, and I appreciate you talking about that. How do you how do you process that on an ongoing basis though? Like, how do you just stay in the work, man? Like, I would imagine there are days uh, you're like, you know, what? I don't want to sing today. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, how, oh. how do you how do you stay in that? Man, that's tough. Honestly. I, the best I can tell you, because I don't guess I've ever thought of it like that. Uh, the best I can tell you is you just show up, man. You just That's keep good. showing up, you know, and uh, and you keep doing it, and you, and you don't let that boy. And I don't know if y'all have this. I, I think everyone's different, and literally, I'm not being facetious. I literally think there are people that don't have this, <laughs> but right, I, right. I, 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 it's like I constantly have that little voice. It's like ah. Uh, this isn't going to help. Don't do this. Just yep. bail out of this, yep. you know? Yep. And, uh, yeah. and so I have, <laughs> right. I have to like constantly say, no, I'm going, I'm going to go, I'm going to show up. But, but the flip side of that same coin though, in honesty and fairness is this has been the hard, one of the harder parts for me is learning what to say no to, you know, cause mm. there's, there's been a handful of things. Cause I, I kind of had to get to a point where I'm like, listen, I got a wife. I have seven Really yeah. six and a half because one's kind of got one foot out the door. But I have eight kids, but uh, seven at home, um, and I don't, I don't want to load up and leave, and leave them behind right. for for some something that's nothing that it's not. I'm just wasting yep. my time. Yep. So you do have to sort of learn how to how to say. And then you you know there's always whatever you do like faith. Uh, career whatever i mean i guess depending on your career some people have careers that are a little more and it's fine i'm i'm not being critical at all let me say that it's fine but uh so some people have careers that are a little more you know wake up at in the morning go to work at nine get off at five and and you know but everything that we do you just have to remember when you see that picture of me in the studio it's just this risk you know this this could bomb it could mm. it could just all burn to the ground, you know, and, and so you just literally day to day, you just keep yeah. showing up and keep doing the work and keep praying that even in little tiny ways, it matters and it, and it's going to mean something, you know. Yeah, that's good. I I, I wrestle with this um, this. I don't want to look back, even if it wasn't as successful as I had hoped. I don't want to look yeah. back and think, what if I had tried, right? What if I had gone right. for it? So I'm wrestling with that on one end, and the other end is I don't want to invest my life in something that's not going to produce. <laughs> so I'm right, constantly right. in this place of friction where I'm like, I want to keep grinding as long as God's leading. And I think that's it, – it's it's listening for God's voice and letting God mm-hmm. carry you forward. Um, that's right, yeah. Man, there's so much good there. Uh, I want to talk about your song, uh, Dig My Grave. Um, yeah. Again, it resonated with me. Man, like like the picture, and, and you're, very, you're a good storyteller, obviously. And, um but just talk about that song. What motivated you to, to, to write that? Uh, it, it's, it, it, it gave me a picture in my mind. Like, I'm like, you know what? You're right. You're exactly right. You can, right. It, this life comes to an end, but there's a lot more beyond this. And that's what we're that's moving right. toward. Yeah. That's what, that was kind of the, 
motivation for the song, really. Um, so, I mean, it was, uh, it, it's born out of a, just a very, well, I hate to say basic, but for those of us who are believers and read the yeah. word, and you know, it's born out of a very basic biblical truth, which is yeah. this life ends, but this life is just a vapor. This is not, That's this good. life is not all there is, you know? Uh, so it came out of that and I, and that was just, that's literally the, the like, um, I don't know the word I want to use, like abiding truth, I guess, that we wanted to sort of mm. kind of plant throughout the song. But then after that, we want, I wanted it to be a jam and a celebration, you know, and yeah. I wanted to be, yeah. I wanted it to have that feel. So basically the way, it, the, the way the whole song started is um, a friend of mine, Clint Brown contacted me and said, well, he sent me a message. It was like a little voice. You know how you can text the sound of right, your voice? Yeah, yeah, That's what I do when yeah. I'm try when I'm driving. I do that so I'm not like typing on my phone right. and trying to drive at the same. <laughs> right. So um, he sent a little piece and he goes, hey, what do you think about this as an idea for a song? And he sang a little bit. And, you know, it's it's music and it's writing and it's producing. And so it turned out a little different, well, a, a decent amount different, but kind of the same as yeah. that first idea. And then we just built on that and wrote the whole song because he just had like a little uh, little part of it, you know. And we built on that and wrote the song. And uh, and I, I actually had and I I do this from time to time. And and me and me and even even sometimes me and my manager will sort of butt heads a little because I'll have like this really clear vision, you know. Uh, <laughs> right. And I did. I, I had like this crystal clear vision of what the what the background vocals were going to sound like, what kind of what how the intro music was going to feel, and dig my grave honestly is one of those songs that i can't say this about every single song that kind of turned out exactly <laughs> you know like i wanted wow, it to yeah. E yeah even at the end of it you know the producer was like hey man see if you can hit that note and so i <laughs> when i did when i hit the note i just i we just left it in I, that so you can hear it i'll go woo because i hit yeah, that note yeah, yeah. you know but we we left it in because it was it's so genuine, you know. Uh, and that's that's the story of the song. I wanted it to be an encouragement to people that hey, you know, you this life doesn't last forever. But man, this life ain't all there is. So. Yeah, I, I I think it's great. I think as a Christian, it's almost like if if you really read the Bible, understand the Bible, understand that there's you know God has a plan for you beyond this. Uh, it, it's like I think the, the phrase is being red pilled, right? It's like you can't look at the mm -hmm. world the, the same way anymore. Like right, once you right, realize right. that, it's like I can't look at what's happening in the world the same way anymore. And and that song yeah. it like encapsulates it. It is fun. It's it it's upbeat, um, but the language and the imagery is just it, it exactly captures that. Like you can do whatever you want, <laughs> but yeah. but there's a lot more than this, and I'm not worried about it. There, yeah, there's something way bigger than me that's in control, and so you know this life is not going to get me down. You know, it's kind of like that. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, Todd, where can people get your music and follow you and and uh, get behind the work that you're doing? Oh, man. First of all, I just let me say, I always try to fit this in. For the ones who already do, I'm so super grateful, man. I just really, I re when you're an in independent artist, uh, it, imagine, it yeah. means a lot, you know. But second of all, if, they, if they're interested, you can go. I'm on everything as far, well, not everything, because there's, there's social media outlets I never even heard of. But like, yeah. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I'm on TikTok, you know, which is uh, I'm I'm not super active on there. I, the Chinese I are listening it, to your I'll, music right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm on there, uh, but you can also go to ToddTofficial.com and you can find how to whatever you know. You find how to get music or whatever. Yeah. And I also try to remind people too that like uh, if you're looking for me on social media, my last name is spelled crazy. Just spell it however you want it you'll find me <laughs> yeah yeah because it's just tillman but it's got that gh right in the middle which is i i don't know i'll i'll have to ask like my great 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 it's the mississippi it's the mississippi spelling of tillman probably yeah i guess so <laughs> <laughs> todd man thank you so much uh yeah, it's thank just you. So, it's encouraging to talk to you your music's super encouraging and um uh, in a world that is very discouraging and hopeless uh, you definitely infuse it with hope, and I really appreciate Thank it. You. So thanks thanks for doing it, and, uh, man, hopefully we can talk again. Yes, sir, anytime. Thank you. I appreciate it, Todd. Please go and check out his um, website, check out his music, follow him. If you want to be encouraged in a world that is increasingly not encouraging, 
uh, follow Todd. You will be glad that you did, so please check that out. Take some time later on at, while you're at it, while you're looking for encouraging uh, information and encouraging inputs, go over to lifeaudio.com. That's where this podcast is hosted, and I would encourage you to check that out. Great content there as well. I look forward to talking to you next time. Got some other great guests coming up and uh, looking forward to these episodes and, and just really being able to share those with you. Please, if you have not yet subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. You can find all of that at jeremystalnicker.com and uh, even get on my newsletter. I'll send you uh, a weekly update of what's happening and some other uh, resources that you can use. So please go and check those out. I will encourage you as I do every single week as we conclude today, when the bullets are flying your direction, when things are exploding around you, you only have two choices. You can stay where you are and die, <laughs> or better yet, you can put one foot in front of the other and march. Always make the better decision. As hard as it may be, as unclear as the future might be, make the better decision to march. Thank you. I will talk to you next time. Many of our veterans feel they need to fight their battles alone. This self-isolation has led to the staggering statistic of more than 20 veterans taking their lives every day. The mission of Mighty Oaks is to eradicate the veteran suicide epidemic and help our warriors change their legacies. We've been able to help over 4,000 veterans and first responders by equipping them with the tools they need to live the lives they were created to live. Our faith-based, peer-to-peer approach has one of the highest success rates of any program available today, offering hope and understanding to those who need it most. By aligning their lives to biblical principles, these men and women are able to lead their families, their communities, and our nation. It's your generosity that can make a difference in the lives of the men and women who have fought for our country and our freedoms. Now that they're home, don't let them fight alone. Learn more at MightyOaksPrograms.org.